Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. So recently I saw that BB8HU posted a video on how he does his blender renders and um, it got me thinking about a lot of the requests that I've gotten to kind of show you guys how I do mine. Um, so today I'm going to show you my process as to how I do my blender renders. This isn't supposed to be a copy of his video, it's just showing you kind of my style, what I do. I hope you guys find this useful and uh, let's get right into the video. Also, I just want to put this out there because I've seen a lot of people mistake this before. This, this is a render. And this, this is a cutout, okay? A render is something that you render out in Blender or another 3D software. This is just taking an in-game screenshot and cutting it out in like Photoshop or something. I just want to put that out there because it's an explanation that's needed. So. Yeah, render means that you actually render it out in some sort of 3D program or something like that. So you're going to need a few things for this tutorial, and that's going to be Blender and the files, and that's really just about it. So I'll have those linked in the description below. I'll have the files in a Google Drive folder, and I'll have the uh, Blender download link available. What you're going to want to do is you're just going to open Blender, open a new file here, general file, and you'll have this right here. Um, yeet the default cube out of existence. Um, and we can just get rid of that light as well. Um, so this is a camera, essentially, it's just gonna show you like what's going on in the scene. Right now we have nothing. So let's change that. So we're going to go, gonna go to File, Append, and then just go wherever you have your file saved. For this tutorial, I'm gonna use a crack shot just because that's one of the most common weapons. Um, so I'm going to double click on this M24 file, then go to Object, and make sure you have Egg here at the top then press control and do hands as well and then I think I'll use an albino as well so now we have the egg the albino and the hands set to go and then you can just click append now right off the bat you'll see that wait there's nothing there so what you can do to fix that is here go to your restriction toggles turn on the disable in viewport and disable in renders and you can see that we now have these options available make sure that all of them are ticked and white and open like that and now you can see that we have our models here. So we go back to our camera here. You can see that we can see what we can do here. So one easy way to move your camera around is do shift tilde. Um, and then you can literally use WASD and E and Q. So E goes up, Q goes down to uh, move around your camera. And then you just click to set it. And then bada bing bada boom, it's there. The one thing that you will notice is that everything is gray, and this is for two reasons. So number one, we're in the solid view, we need to go into the material preview, and you'll see that everything is white now. So we need to add some textures to this. So let's click on this gun here, so you have to click on the actual model, go up into the shading tab, and then once you're here in the shading tab, you can see that we have our little viewport here, we have some box down here, and some stuff over here. Let's zoom in here, you can just use the, uh, the scroll wheel. That way we can get a good view of the gun. I think that looks about good. Let's go now to the uh, material properties here, this red ball thingy. Um, and you can see right now, this is a lot to take in if you don't know anything, but um, just click this minus right here and that'll essentially get rid of the material. We're gonna create a brand new material, so click new. And now you see that we have a principled BSDF and a material output. This principled BSDF is essentially gonna tell us what we have on our material output here because uh, we have that connected to the surface. So now what we're going to want to do is you're going to want to click here in the uh, squares here, do Shift A, then click to search and search for vertex color and press enter and then click to place it. Then you're going to take this color right here, you're going to click and drag and place and connect it to the base color. And now you see that we have colors on our gun perfect now the only thing is as you can see it's kind of like very shiny if you want that look you can go for it that's not something I typically do so I usually set the specular down to like 0.1 and the roughness up to 0.9 and then that way it gets a little bit of like lighting in but it's not like over the top it doesn't make it look like plastic so now that we have that in there we can mess with a few things now let's add a hat go to file import FBX for the hats because the hats are an FBX file and for this tutorial Let's see. What should we pick? I think we should go for a Pablo hat here. So we have the Pablo hat in there Let's go into the shading make sure we have the Pablo hat selected. So it has this like lighter orange here Let's do the exact same thing. We just did for the gun vertex color connect the color to the base color 
you can see we already have it right here it's already colored now let's turn the specular down turn the roughness up and the metallic a bit down okay so now we have a pablo hat and we have the albino crack shot now what else can we do we can change here the egg color and the hands color so let's go to the egg here let's do let's go into the material properties click on this base color and then you can kind of just play around with this until you think it looks good you can use hex codes essentially what you have to do for that just go to the base color click on this color here and then go to the hex here but i think that is about good now that we have that set up let's click and go into our camera view so toggle camera view up here shift tilde and then we can go something like i think that's good all right we're going to save your files because that is going to be important because blunder loves to crash when you haven't saved in a while okay so now i've saved that so right now this is the material preview right so you can see it's decently well lit but if we go to render this let me show you go to render this you can see that's not what it looks like in the render right let's go up here to the rendered view and now we can see what this is actually going to render like so there's many different ways you can light your scenes um i'm only going to show one in this video just so that the tutorial isn't too long and i'm going to use what's called an hdri and essentially what that does is it light it uses an image to light your scene to create more realistic lighting so i'll show you what i mean if you go into your world properties right here this little globe the red globe go to the color click on the yellow dot and then click on environment texture and then click open um, you can use any image you want and use it as lighting data so I'll link down below a website that gives you free HDRIs I'm just gonna use this one here now it takes a bit to load but once it's loaded in you can see that your character is very well and evenly lit and it doesn't look you know horrible so now we can see that if we go to render this you can see looks great it's well lit it's all it's all good right but you can see that we have now our hdri background and that's not what we want right because we want to make this uh transparent renders for like thumbnails and such so how we're gonna fix this is we're gonna go to film uh here in the render properties then go to transparent and there you go so now you see we have this grid we go to render this oh not animation render image you can see it's now transparent so this is the basics of just making the renders itself it is quite the process um, but once you got it down it it's pretty quick I'm gonna show you a few couple tips and things that are gonna make it look a little bit better so let's get on with that the first thing you want to do is you want to tick here ambient occlusion and this is essentially gonna add shadows where they should be based on where objects are like near each other so always make sure you have that ticked that's gonna make it look a little bit more realistic another thing that I like to do is just add in an area light um, like from the back like that let's move this over here and then maybe like that and essentially what that's going to do is that's going to introduce a little bit more of shadows because the thing is in Eevee which is the render engine that Blender defaults to um, HDRIs don't have shadow data that's why you could see with the ambient occlusion and that off there's no shadows like there's barely any shadows right this is literally just because there's no lighting from coming from the bottom. So adding ambient occlusion and an area light is going to introduce shadows into that, which is what we want. So now that we have that, we now have shadows. It looks a lot better than before. And honestly, just using this, this is completely fine. This could be a final product. Now, another thing that you can do is the blender files for the guns actually have the reload animations in them. So if you go down here to your timeline and you click and drag, you can see the re reload animation is there. What you can do is you can kind of place this playhead wherever you want and then click render and it'll render it at that exact frame. So that's another tip that you can do. There's a lot more that you can do with that that I won't be covering in this video. If you want to know all these extra things that I'm not covering, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want me to do. But honestly, just for a basic render for thumbnails and such, this is all you need. This is really all you need. And you can just set up your camera wherever you want like that. Click render. And honestly, that's that's high quality thumbnail stuff. 
So the next thing I want to go over is how to export these. Make sure that you have them in your files. So what you want to do is you want to go to your output here, select your resolution. Default is 1920 by 1080, which is just regular HD. My thumbnails are normally 1440p, so I export in uh, 2560 by 1440 and that works great for me that's really high definition so that's good uh next you want to go down here make sure your file format is saved as png and you have this rgba um and what that's going to do is it's going to have all the colors and it's also going to add an alpha channel which essentially means that you can have it transparent color depth set to 16 compression to zero and then you're good to render here render image image up here save as and then just save it wherever you want to save it and then you have a transparent render completed so yeah that's pretty much it that's the process that i normally go through to make my renders this is the process i use to make my free render pack which if you didn't know is a completely free pack i'll link it down below and it has everything you need to use for thumbnails it has a bunch of these renders so go ahead and use that the only thing that i ask is that you give me credit in the description uh, but beyond that it's completely free i also have some more paid renders um, and those are using more exclusive weapons and they're also higher definition and of course all these links will be down in the description below So make sure to go check them out. This is basically how you do it with everything. This works with just about any gun any hat, egg, whatever um, And yeah, that's about it. And of course you can always play around with lighting and angles make everything your own for example with this light right here if we go to the light properties we can change the color to really anything and the uh, the power is just gonna make it brighter or less bright. So yeah, really for this light, you don't really need to make it super intense. It's really just to introduce shadows and highlights because that's gonna make it just look better overall. But yeah, that's pretty much the process I used to go through my renders. I hope you guys did enjoy. I've gotten a lot of requests for this video, so here it finally is. Do let me know if you want me to cover anything else um, about the renders. There's lots of stuff I didn't go over just because I wanted to make this a quicker tutorial. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to see anything more. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials, edits, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi guys, thank you for watching, like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more great content. And as always, shout out to Sugar Plum Fantasies.